day that you have blessed us with. But this is the day that you have made, O oh God. And we will rejoice and be glad about it. And so, Father, even today, we just thank you for this time of worship, for this time when we can gather in fellowship, for this time when we can receive of your word. And right now, God, we ask that you would have your way today. Have your way this morning. God, we extend an invitation to you. Holy Spirit, fill this place. Fill this place with your glory. God, we pray for the fire of your glory to fill this place where there will be signs and miracles, breakthroughs and increases. Lord God, where you would set captives free. Send your glory, oh God. And so God, right now, we yield back. We yield back this time and we yield back ourselves. Father, we present our bodies and our lives to you as living sacrifices. That God, we would be holy, set aside and consecrated yes. for your service yes. which is our reasonable act of worship Hallelujah. god right now Thank you, please Jesus. receive our worship yes, lord, please god. receive our praise yes. please receive yes. our service as Hallelujah. unto you lord yes. that you and you alone would be glorified yes, speak through us tonight speak, speak through us this morning lord yes, yes lord Hallelujah. speak through us speak, lord. lord minister to our hearts and minds as we prepare and continue Hallelujah. to worship you, Lord, Hallelujah. in spirit Hallelujah. and in truth. And everybody say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. God bless everyone. Those who are tuning in online, God bless you as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you're so awesome. As we're continuing to worship, I just want to read what the Lord dropped in my spirit earlier this morning as I was getting ready. It's taken from Isaiah 54. It's a very familiar verse. Verse 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. The reason why I believe that the Lord, hallelujah, gave me this early in the morning before I even got here is because many of us are experiencing weapons that are being formed. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you know, when I was just talking to God, it's it was so beautiful, this communion, because the beauty of it is we don't dictate which weapons are formed against us. We don't get a say in the matter. Hallelujah. We don't dictate how they come, how quick they come, what type of weapon is formed. But the heritage of the saints is this. No weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. Now, I don't know if that's anybody on social media. I don't know if that's anybody in this place. We've experienced, we may feel the pressure of the weapon, but we can rise up in the heritage of the Lord to say, you know what? I cast this down and whatever speaking against me, I condemn it. I speak against it because no weapon formed against me, my life, my mind, my family, our finances, our health, whatever it is, our children, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Does anyone have a no weapon formed against me or prosper praise? Does anybody have a no weapon formed against me is going to be able to prosper praise? I do. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I thank you because what the enemy tried to do, God, you stepped in. God, I give you glory and I give you praise for the rest of my life. I owe you worship. I owe you my life. I owe you praise because no weapon formed against me was able to prosper. So with every strength in the fiber of my being, I'm going to give you a Shabbat praise. I'm going to give you an on-time praise. You're an on-time God. Yes, you are. And I praise you and I praise you and I praise you I praise you we extol you and we esteem you high you are the most high God in fact after every weapon that was formed I believe I got a new praise come on I believe my praise went to another level it went to another level my praise has gone to another dimension because what the enemy tried to do he gets no airtime and no glory but what he did 
must push my praise to another level. Is that anybody today? He pushed my praise to another level. You are the most high God. You reign supreme. You are my Jehovah God. You are I am that I am. Whatever I need you to be. God, I just insert the adjective. In fact, I can run out of breath for telling you how great you are. You are unchanging. You are the ancient of days. You are Alpha Omega, the beginning and the ending. Hallelujah, the author and the finisher of my faith. The enemy will not have the final say. Because he is the author and the finisher of my faith. So today, as we continue to worship, we want to continue knowing that it doesn't matter how the weapon is formed. We don't dictate. But what the enemy cannot take is how we worship God and how we press on and how we press through and how we continue on. And we say, though you slay me, yet will I trust in you. All the appointed days of my life, I will give him glory. I will give him glory. I will walk away from this and I will walk away from that. All the trouble that tried to pursue me, but the angels of the Lord, hallelujah, told the enemy to get back. Yes, God, therefore, I owe you praise. Therefore, you are the ancient of days. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the mighty God. Lord, you're so beautiful. Hallelujah, beauty, hallelujah, becomes you, oh God. You are wonderful. You are majestic in all of your ways. Hallelujah. You are the lover and the lifter of my head. You are the lover of my soul. You're the reason why I sing. You're the reason why I press on. You're the reason why I press through. And the enemy can't steal my praise. I know my shy. Is that anybody? No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. Formed against you will prosper. It's in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And as we're continuing on, just looking for my, we're continuing on in worship. We're going to worship in song, and we'll just get into the song that's that we're about to play. Because we are the worship team, and you know what? That's all right. Because Pastor Joseph and I, we understand we're not despising our small beginnings. I'm not despising my small beginning. In fact, I, I learned that I have to glory in it. I have to give God glory. It's, it's then that he shines. He gets all the glory anyway. Hallelujah. We may not have a grandiose stage. We may not have an elaborate worship team behind us. But guess what? I still owe him my praise. And he's going to get it. He's going to get it. Hallelujah. So we're about to praise. And as we listen to the music, just get into the worship. Because we enter into his courts with thanksgiving. And into his gates with praise. And we are thankful unto him. Hallelujah. And we bless his name. Because you know what praise and worship does? It's like a password. Hallelujah. To a hidden vault. It's like a password. Praise unlocks the door. Thanksgiving unlocks the door. Worship unlocks the door. It shifts my mind to focus on the Lord. I focus on his, pro his promise and not my problems. Because that's what worship does. That's what praise does. You cannot enter into the secret place of the Most High God and worship Him and still come out and remain the same. It's impossible. The God that I serve is a fire. He's a fire. He's a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. So let us worship. Let us worship. Let us worship. Let us worship. Glory, 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 glory. We give the Lord praise. We give him honor. We give him a wave offering. Just imagine all of the trees of the earth waving their branches as a creative thing to give glory to its creator. We wave our arms in praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the great I am. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Give him the sacrifice of praise with the fruit of your lips. We're going to elevate, we're going to elevate even now. Hallelujah. We're going to lift our voices in praise. God, we glorify you. Hallelujah, Lord God. Yes, Lord. You are worthy, you are worthy. We praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
from heaven yes. and we stand in agreement with what God has said yes. we stand in agreement yes. not with what man has said mm -hmm. not with the report of the world yes. the report of the doctors yes. not what the bank account looks like not what our body is saying to us we stand in the agreement with what God has said right. we say yes Lord yes. we believe and we receive yes. that we are healed yes. And we are free. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 God. We bless you. Right now, we just want to welcome those who have come out this beautiful morning. We bid you greeting. It is a pleasure to see you. Amen. 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 You. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. We've been praying and we just thank God for yes. the good praise report. Amen. God bless you, sister. God Amen. bless you. Amen. And all of those who are online, we yes. bid you God greeting. You. We are Healing Empowerment Church. Yes. I'm Pastor Joseph McLeod and I'm here with my lovely wife, Amen. Pastor Latanya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And for all first time visitors, we're glad that you're yes. here. Oh, God. Amen. God meant for you to be here today. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we just continue in the spirit of worship. We just welcome the Holy Spirit in this place as we already have. And we believe that he has been ushered into your space, in your place, in your hearts. Maybe you're online and maybe you are worshiping in your living room or in your dining room or in your bedroom. Wherever you are, it could even be in your, your car. We're believing that God is there. God is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. And even right now, we just bless your name. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we're continuing to worship, you can just stay right here. We're just going to go ahead and get into the word so we will continue to worship with the word. Amen. As we receive Pastor Joseph McLeod, we just stand on our feet and we give God all the praise and all the glory that is unto his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give God all of the praise, all of the honor. God, we just worship you. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, God, that you want to speak to us. We heard that you made a decree from heaven. You said that we are healed. You said that we are free. And we agree, oh God. Even the word this morning, oh God, is your proclamation that we are free and we are healed. And so, God, even as we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your truth, God, right now, all over this place, even all over the Internet, God, we ask that you continue to condition our hearts, prep our ears, that we can hear your truth that applies to us specifically. God, we ask that your word be like seed that land on the good soil in our hearts, that it would take deep root and germinate, and that it would bear forth and bring a harvest of righteousness. Good fruit, yes. The fruit of your character, your nature, and your power. God, in the name of Jesus. And we're praying for every single person that is hearing us this morning and that would hear us later God that you would meet them in the place of their need yes, Lord. Father we stand in agreement with them as they come before your throne yes. asking God that you would intervene that you would shift and change right. their circumstance so that you be glorified right. and that they be built up and edified do it Lord do it Lord God, we thank you for the move of your spirit even on this morning. We pray, God, that you would be pleased today. We yield back, Lord God, this time to you. We pray, God, that you be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. We are just so grateful and glad about today. Amen. And one of the things that we do at Healing and Power Met Church is we personalize the word of God. Because we believe that the word is God's instruction to us personally. Yes, others may read it as a historical text. Others may, may look at it and just surface its meaning or just read it once in a while but we believe that God wants to speak to us from heaven through his word that's how we hear from him and so we're going to personalize this Bible and if you're online you can do this along with us we ask that you would take your scripture take your Bible and just lift it up in the air and repeat after me this is the infallible word of God my life is transformed by it. My mind is renewed by it. My well-being is secured by it. I read it. I believe it. And I receive it. For the improvement of my life. For the advancement of God's kingdom. 
and for his glory. And for his glory. Somebody say amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. And if you could remain standing, we're going to get into the word. Hallelujah. And our foundational text today is found in Numbers chapter 22. Yes. And we're going to be reading verses 1 to 6. And then we're going to skip to Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2. And when you get there, Say amen. 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 Praise God. Numbers chapter 22, verses 1 to 6. And it reads Then the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, son of Support saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was terrified because there were so many people. Indeed, Moab was filled with dread because of the Israelites. The Moabites said to the elders of Midian, This horde is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, son of Zippor, who was the king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to summon Balaam. <laughs> Let's get forward. Balak said, a people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Now come and put a curse on these people because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps then I will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that whoever you bless is blessed and whoever you curse is cursed. Let's get to Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2. <clears throat> like the sparrow in her wandering, like the swallow in her flying, so the curse without cause, does not come and alight on the undeserving. So Lord God, we thank you for the hearing and the reading of your word. God, we ask that you would continue to add a blessing and life to us because of it. In Jesus' name. And so today we will be speaking on the subject and title, Breaking Off Every Curse. Breaking Off Every Curse. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. And so when we look at the text, we look here and we see that Balak, who was the king of the Moabites, he witnessed the great military conquest. God gave the Israelites under the leadership of Moses against the Amorites. He saw this. And what he did, he was terrified that the fate of destruction would happen to him and his kingdom. In fact, the entire Moabite community was filled with dread. They were afraid. So Balak said about the Israelites, they are too powerful for me. You see, it was fear that motivated him to find some type of way some military technique to debilitate and handicap the Israelites in order for him and his army to be able to defeat them and drive them out of his land. This technique was to invoke a curse against them. This was a military technique against his enemy. And so this strategy is interesting because Balak attempts to employ the unseen supernatural dimension in the realm of the spirit in order to hinder his opponent. You see, he tried to attempt to do this by hiring Balaam to program and activate a curse against the Israelites. Balaam was a non-Israelite prophet who also engaged in sorcery. And he had a reputation for being very effective at landing a curse or a blessing on someone or some group. 
He was being hired to do this. And so some of us, if we think about it, may have encountered a pattern of unfortunate and even harmful experiences and outcomes in our life throughout many years. And in some instances, it may have felt like some invisible wall or barricade has been set up against you to oppose and sabotage and to block your success. You see, there have been abnormal setbacks. And you see, it may feel like despite efforts to get a different result, a negative conclusion seems to continue to gravitate and attract back to your life like a magnet. And you may be wondering, why does this kind of thing keep happening in my life or in the life of my family? Could it be that it is a result of a curse? Operating through witchcraft or even some word curse spoken against you or your family to bring misfortune, to bring failure, to bring calamity or loss. But we're here with good news that it won't work. It won't work because God has blessed you in this life. We've heard from heaven that God will heal you. He will set you free and you are blessed. Somebody say, break it off every chain. You see, what we find here was Balak was attempting to bring a curse so that it would debilitate and bring misfortune against the children of Israel. And what we later find out is that he was unable to do it. You see, this invisible thing, this force that he was attempting to bring was something that even in our own lives we may find active. But God is saying, just like he did with the children of Israel, I'm going to protect you. Because I've decreed and I have declared a blessing upon you. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so we need to understand what exactly is a curse. Some of us, we hear it and we we think casually, you know, people use curse words and people say, I'm going to curse this thing. Or we hear it casually, but we may not fully get it. A curse is a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm, to bring misfortune or punishment to someone or something. It is an invisible program that operates against an individual or a group or thing in order to bring misfortune. You see, a curse can be as simple as a prayer. It can be a spoken word, an invocation that is designed to bring harm or injury to someone or something. You see, curses are sent out in two ways, saints. Either they are sent out implicitly or unintentional curses. For example, through word curses. Or they can be sent out explicitly or intentional curses by way of the occult or witchcraft. And so we see that which, whatever way that it comes, it is designed to specifically invoke or bring evil or dysfunction upon a person, upon a group of people, upon a business, upon a church, upon a family, upon a ministry, upon a nation. You see, we found out in the text that the enemies of Israel were, were attempting to invoke a curse. Against their entire nation. They desired misfortune to come upon the people to debilitate them in order to defeat them. Some of us have enemies that want to defeat us, but if they look at us as we are, they say, we may not be able to take them as they are. We need to undermine their power. We need to steal their strength. We need to invoke a curse so that we can destroy them. But it won't work. It won't work. And we find that Balak wanted to use Balaam to explicitly invoke a curse against the nation of Israel. 
Now, a curse, understand this, will continue to perpetuate. It will continue to occur over and over and over in a person's life and even in their family. Unless supernatural spiritual intervention yes. stops it. Amen. It can also be a perpetuation of a curse now that has been caused by or experienced by an ancestor that has been passed on through the bloodline. It could have been a curse that has been inherited. Mm -hmm. We refer to these curses as generational, generational, generational curses. And so it is said that a curse can be like an evil thing moving up from the past, even the past of your ancestry through the bloodline. It's like a deep shadow. And although you may not have committed a sin to bring about the cause for a curse, maybe it was your ancestor. And until their sin is repented of and their sin is renounced and rejected, their sin stands against you as an accusation because you now are the person alive that represents your bloodline, carrying the DNA of the person who committed the sin. Some of us, we need to repent even for things that we hadn't done to break the curse, yes, come on. to break the curse. Because of the sins of our ancestors, we have to understand that at some point it created even legal charges against us that the enemy uses as reasons or causes for a curse to land. Reasons or causes for a curse to operate and to have expression in our lives. And you see, this gives even the enemy a legal right to torment us in various areas. These legal charges are called ordinances. These ordinances is a legal term and it represents an authoritative order. There are ordinances that the enemy uses as accusations against us because of the sins of our ancestry. We're talking about generational curses for a moment. And so in Exodus chapter 20 verse 4, it says, you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. You see, there is the, the sin of idolatry. There is the sin of the occult that possibly some ancestor engaged in. And God said, you know, because of that, according to the word, it says, because God says, I am a jealous God punishing the children for the sins of their fathers to the third and fourth generation. And you see, this is how curses get passed on to one generation, to another generation, to the next. It perpetuates until some intentional supernatural force and power stops it. And we're here today, this morning, to say we got good news. Tonight, today, this morning, it stops. God says, I'm going to intervene. So Satan searches for a reason. He searches for a cause. Even a blame against us. To accuse us. In order to pin a curse on some current event in our life. He pins it to us. And so he will even find in our previous generation and use that iniquity to bring some specific family misfortune. Especially those things that link an ancestry of calls, the sin of an ancestor, to what is currently happening today. You see, some people, I can recall someone saying a testimony of a man who was incarcerated for the first time. And when that man entered into jail for the first time, he met two people. He met his father and his grandfather in the same prison. 
There was a generational curse. Three generations in prison at the same time, in the same place. There was a curse upon his family. It perpetuated. You see, certain curses in families may trigger many problems in a person's life. It can hijack the person's destiny to produce failure, disappointment, resistance, opposition when you are on the verge of breakthrough. It can bring stagnation and even put you in a holding pattern to stop you from making progress. It's a curse. Many are suffering from curses they don't even know about because of the curses that were caused long ago in their lineage. The evil that their forefathers committed through evil sacrifice or bloodshed. But God is saying, today, we're breaking off every curse. We're breaking off every curse from our lives, amen? From our families, amen? From all things associated with us. So I have a question to ask this morning. How do I know I have a curse operating in my life? You may want to know. There are a number of indicators that point out that there is a curse operating in a person's life. Curses are often marked by some unusual negative condition, some negative unusual outcome. It can be repeated sickness, especially hereditary sicknesses and diseases yes, that the doctors may not even be able to pin a cause on why you have it. It can be a reoccurring financial insufficiency. It can be poverty. Now understand, sometimes we may experience poverty for a short period of time. And you see, this is just to test us so that we can get to a better place. We know that trouble don't last always. You may be in between your blessed place. We're not talking about the fact that there are some lean times and some abundant times. That's not what we're referring to. We're talking about systematic, long-term, reoccurring states of poverty. Yes. It could be that you're under a curse. You may see poverty-like circumstances and situations that not only are showing up in your life, but had expression in your family's life, yeah. from your mother, from your father, to your grandparents, all the way back, and you wonder now it's showing up in your life. A reoccurring thing. It could be female problems in your, in yes. your body. Yes, yes. Barrenness. Miscarriage after miscarriage. Menstruation problems. Yes. It can be the breakdown of marriages yes. and situations that cause family alienation. Yes. There's a pattern of it. There's a pattern of it. And, you, and you're looking to say, where's this pattern coming from? And now it's showing up in my life. There's a pattern. There's a pattern. Yes. Yes. Mental and emotional breakdown. These are all indicators. Accident prone. Sometimes things are just breaking all around us. Sometimes we find ourselves in accidents. Sometimes things are just easily broken, accident prone. A history of unnatural deaths in the family. Even a history of premature deaths. Somebody may be under a curse today, but God is saying it's going to break today. It's going to break today. Hallelujah. And so Balaam understood the negative power of a curse against a group of people. He also was very aware of the principles of supernatural engagement and where he needed to go. So he understood from his experience, Balaam did, when he was either going to invoke a curse or bring a blessing, he needed to go to a high and elevated place, like a mountain, in order to make contact with the spirit realm. And we find that Balak and Balaam went to three locations where they did this. And they erected an altar in order for them to give sacrifices. And you see, these, all, these altars, these elevated locations, 
where their attempt to create portals in the realm of the spirit to contact, to interact, and to trade with the spirit world. They were trying to give the spirit entity something in order to satisfy that entity in order for a curse to be exacted against someone in the earth. This is what they were attempting to do. And so Balak also understood a valuable offering was required in order for the supernatural transaction yes. to occur between the spirit realm and the natural world. This system, we have to understand, is a mystery, and it was originated by God himself and copied by the enemy. You see, this system works even when we worship Yahweh. You see, when we worship God, we're giving him an offering. When we give him the sacrifice of praise, even with the fruit of our lips, it's giving him in an altar, at an altar, even in an elevated place in our hearts, him blessing, him offering, him sacrifice. We even offer up our own bodies as living sacrifices on the altar of the cross, that elevated place. It was on the Mount of Golgotha that Jesus was an offering yes. at an elevated place yes. on an altar of the cross. But what we received in exchange for the offering was salvation. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And see, the enemy understands this same principle, this same concept, and it was being copied by Balak and Balaam. And so the enemy wants to use the very systems of God against us. Yes. And so Balak and Balaam, under Balaam's direction, they offered seven bulls and seven rams on seven altars in each place. This was performed in exchange, now watch this, for God to render a verdict against his chosen people, the children of Israel. They were trying to manipulate and cause God and give God a reason for a curse to be put on the people of Israel. But it didn't work. Somebody say it didn't work. didn't work. You see, these altars and those sacrifices were not God's will. It wasn't God's will. They were trying to manipulate and program into the spirit realm what was against God's will. God, however, met with Balaam away from these altars. But what I want to insert to you this morning and wherever you are, it is not God's will that you be cursed. Right. Some may say, I'm cursed because God brought this upon me. I'm cursed because maybe I deserve it. I'm cursed because maybe I'm African American. And that's a lie from the devil. It's not God's will. And the reality is you are blessed and not cursed. You are a child of Abraham. The recipient of the blessing. Amen. Amen. We are blessed and highly favored. And so we read in Numbers chapter 24, verse 9, it says, Then Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your offering while I go aside. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet with me. Whatever he reveals to me, I will tell you. Then he went off to a barren height. Notice that God never met with him at these altars. He never met with him there. And so now, each of the three times this happened, God gave Balaam a blessing to pronounce. He said, I want you to pronounce a blessing instead of a curse over the children of Israel. You have to know that God's will is that a blessing be pronounced over your life and not a curse. Sometimes people want to pronounce curses. God says, that's not my will. That's not my will. That's not my will. My will, three times he told Balaam, is to bless them. Is to bless them. Is to bless them. God wants to bless you today. Amen. And then it says, may those who bless you be blessed. And those who curse you be cursed. Numbers 24 verse 9. This is what God said about the children of Israel. Yes. 
that they can't be cursed. A curse could, could be projected against them, and it's not God's will. And God has said, those who bless you, children of Israel, will be blessed. But someone who pronounces a curse, they themselves will receive the backlash of a curse upon them. We need to be careful. Others need to be careful. It's God's will that we be blessed. You see, God is pronouncing a blessing on all of us today. And in spite of what the enemy has tried to say or tried to use, it won't work. And what the devil meant for evil, understand this, that God is going to turn it around for good. Hallelujah. Somebody say, breaking off every curse. Breaking off every curse. Hallelujah. Now, we've talked about ways in which a person can receive a curse. By way of the bloodline, those generational curses. I want to explore other ways in which a person can open themselves up to having a curse land on them. We read in the very beginning in Proverbs chapter 26, verse 20. I'm sorry, 26, verse 2. It says, like a fluttering sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. Now I want you to notice something, that the opposite of this is also true. That a curse that has a cause, or has a reason, can and will land and have operation in your life. If there is a reason, if there is a cause. And so we now have to explore and ask ourselves, what are the reasons and what are the causes that can give room for a curse to land? Number one, sinful behavior brings a curse, mm -hmm. especially in a number of areas that I'm going to highlight. Sinful behavior brings a curse. Sinful behavior in the area of having false gods. We find in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, it says, you shall have no other gods before me. In Deuteronomy 27, verse 14, it says, The Levites shall recite to all the people of Israel in a loud voice. Now watch this. This is what they are to recite. Cursed is anyone who makes an idol, a thing detestable to the Lord, the work of skilled hands, and set up in secret. God is saying, you are cursed. If you do this. So God is saying, here is a reason for how a curse can land. If you set up an idol, if you have an idol in your own life erected, it may not be with the hands that you have made this thing physically. It can be an idol in your life, in your mind. It can be something that you have put ahead of God. God is saying, when we have idols in our lives, it sets us up for a curse to land. Somebody say amen. Amen. Also, if we've ever been exposed to or involved in the occult. Amen. And I want to read in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and 9. It says, when you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or cast spells, or who is a medium or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. And because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you will dispossess, listen to those who practice sorcery or divination. But as for you, the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. And so some have said, you know what? My wife and I, we see as we may be watching certain programs, commercials will come on. The psychic hotlines. Somebody wants to know about their future. They want to know about 
What's going on? Read my palm. Palm reading places. Tarot cards. We watch certain shows and we, we see these couples and they, they will go to someone who's a medium to channel some force. Demonic force. To gain intel and insight into their future. God is saying that's going to bring a curse on you. That's going to open you up to a curse. That's going to give an open wide door for the enemy to legally come in and affect you. Some may have said, I thought it was just a casual thing. I, I was just playing. I wasn't really serious. We need to repent of that. Because it is a serious thing. It's not casual. I was just practicing the witchcraft. I, I was watching those movies and I was just doing the incantations like they were. No, 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 no. That's going to open yourself up to a curse. Be careful. Be careful. Other things that indicate that we have a condition where a curse can land is disrespect for parents. How is that? In Deuteronomy 27, verse 16, it says, Cursed is anyone who dishonors their father or mother. That hasn't changed. When we dishonor our parents, when we dishonor or disrespect our parents in any type of form or way, it could be a nasty attitude, it could be a disrespectful comment, it could be complete disobedience, defiance. It could be a word that you spoke that you know you shouldn't have said. God is saying you are opening yourself up to a curse. I'm not just talking about the little kids that don't like what mom and dad decided to do and they, they can't get their way. I'm talking about every child. You can be an adult child and disrespect and dishonor your parents. And God is saying he knows that there is a system in place. That if and when you do these things, you open yourself for a curse to be operative in your life. We need to be careful. Watch how we honor our parents. We need to take every opportunity to honor those who have fed us, those who have raised us. We need to give honor to whom honor is due. Even if you feel like my parents don't deserve it, they didn't do what they were supposed to do in my life, God still holds you responsible to give them honor. Not because they deserve it, but because of their position. Yes. That's why you do it. Another reason that's a sinful behavior is treachery against a neighbor. In Deuteronomy 27 and 17, speaks of this. And it communicates violation of an allegiance or faith or confidence in someone that was broken. It refers to treason. Also, injustice to the weak. Deuteronomy 27 and 18. It says, First is anyone who leads the blind astray on the road. And then it goes on in verse 19. Cursed is anyone who withholds justice from the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow. God is a God of justice. And we have to understand that even... If we are a part of a system, a part of a community, a part of a nation that withholds rights and withholds that which belongs to someone who may be poor. If you hold back on justice, you open up yourself and your people and your nation to a curse. That's what the word of God says. Deuteronomy 27 and 18. Find it if you need to. God is sending warning. He's not ignoring the issue of injustice. We can pray, we can fast, we can go on a national prayer, a national fair, a national fast. And God is saying, the issue that I'm concerned about is this as well. Justice for all. Do not partner with injustice. Do not scheme or strategize and find a way to withhold the rights of one group so that another group can have advantage. This is the word of God. Another way of sinful behavior is illicit sex. 
In Deuteronomy 27, verse 20, it says, a curse, it reflects and it talks about curses within family relationships. Illicit sexual encounters be between family members. It will bring a curse. Wrong type of sexual relationships outside of the confines and the, the, the boundary of marriage can bring a curse. Perjury. Lying while giving evidence under earth. Oath. And Deuteronomy 27 and 25, it says, Cursed is anyone who accepts a bribe to kill an innocent person. Accepting of a bribe to withhold the truth. So that one individual or one group can gain advantage off of your lie. Perjury. That's going to bring on that person a curse. Stealing. Whenever we withhold or we're stingy toward God, we find in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 9, it speaks of this. Perverting the gospel. And Galatians 1 and 8 speaks of this. Whenever we depend on our flesh and not on God, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way leads to death. Death-like experiences are experiences of a curse. And then we find, and I'm going to read this first, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, it says, The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Verse 2, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Verse 3, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. This is what God says. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Another way, a sinful behavior that brings a curse is anti-Semitism, hatred against the children of Israel, according to Genesis 12 and 3. You see, for those who want to curse the children of Israel, God says, I will curse them. That can bring a curse on a person. And you see, there are other ways in which curses can land. And the, the sinful behavior we've just examined, those ways can definitely bring a curse. But understand, there's a scripture that says there is life and death that are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. And so this, the second set of conditions that can bring a curse. I'm going to explore. These are curses that a, pers a person imposes on you. It may not be something that you did, but it's something that someone else has projected against you. Authority imposed word curses. These are examples of implicit cursing. So what does this look like? These are destructive and harmful words that people with relational authority speak over another. And sometimes it has supernatural power to bring fulfillment. For example, if a parent curses a child by saying, you're no good. A teacher curses a student by saying, you're a slow student. A pastor curses a member that says you will fail in life and suffer harm if you and your family ever leave my ministry. It's a curse. We need to be careful what we speak that's not God's will. Whenever spouses ever get to a point where they're saying demeaning or belittling disrespectful comments against each other. It's word cursing. Other things that include things that people have said that speak word curses. You may have heard this. You are useless. You're a failure. You'll never be good at anything. You're hopeless. You are a waste. You will never amount to anything in life. You are always, and you can fill in the negative attribute, you will always be something negative. 
You are terrible. You're an embarrassment. I'm an, you're embarrassing. It's in your family. And it will sure show up in you. These are word curses. These are word curses. And these negative verbal dealings can have a negative self-fulfillment. If the person being cursed believes or comes into agreement with the word curse. Sometimes people have been under a barrage, a negative environment where all they heard growing up was negative things about what they couldn't do and who they were. And then they get to a point where now they have handicaps because they believed a lie that maybe they weren't smart enough. Maybe they couldn't do it. Maybe they, they, they weren't attractive enough. Maybe they couldn't run fast enough. Maybe they couldn't do whatever it is that they desired to do. Those words debilitated and handicapped that person. Not only are these examples of word curses, they're violent verbal abusive communications, often spoken in anger, designed to deliberately injure and wound the person being attacked or insulted. You see, God is very serious about violent and harmful words and insults spoken against others. We need to be careful. And as we read in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But I say to you that everyone who continues to be angry with his brother or harbors malice, enmity of heart against him shall be liable to and unable to escape the punishment imposed by the court. And whoever speaks contemptuously and insultingly to his brother shall be liable to and unable to escape the punishment imposed by the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you cursed fool, you empty-headed idiot, shall be liable to and unable to escape the hell of fire, Gehenna. I read from the Amplified Version. You see, God is serious. I'm going to read from the NIV. It says, in verse 21, it says, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. Verse 22, But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. You see, we need to be careful about what we say to each other. Raka is a biblical word and a term. It's actually a slur that means worthless, empty. And so here in the scripture, in this text, Jesus makes a striking connection between murder and anger. Even anger expressed through words, he makes this connection. And so he informs us that obedience to the commandment against murder begins with eliminating anger for one's brother or sister, along with verbal insults. Otherwise, the person makes themselves subject to God's judgment. So we see in Matthew 20, we see in Matthew 12 and 36, it says, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account of it in the day of judgment. We need to, care, we need to be careful with the words that we communicate yes. to one another. God is serious. When we look at James chapter 3, verse 8, it says, But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. That's exactly what a curse brings. With the tongue we praise the Lord and Father. And with it we curse human beings who have been made in the image and the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. 
This should not be. You see, we're breaking off every curse. And even the curses that have been imposed against us, they're going to be broken off even this day. But God is saying we will also be careful with the things that we say out of our own mouths. That we speak life and not death. You see, blessings bring life. Curses bring death. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 11, Jesus is speaking to encourage those who have ever been on the receiving end of a word curse. And it says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. He says, for my sake. And to revile means to criticize in an abusive or angrily insulting manner. That's what revile means. And so Jesus is saying, is saying that every word curse against you will fail and the curse shall not land, it shall not rest. Instead, you shall be blessed. We're here to say that every curse is being broken off. You're going to be blessed. And so we are encouraged by God to use our tongue to bless and not curse. In Romans chapter 12, verse 14, it says, we are, and then here it is, we are to bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. I'm sorry, that was Matthew chapter 5, verses 44. Let me read Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 again. It says, bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. In Romans chapter 4, verse 12, now let's read. It says, bless those who persecute you. You see, we're encouraged to bless. God wants us to bless. He says, bless those who persecute you, who are cruel in their attitude towards you. Bless and do not curse them. You see, God, for his saints, for his children, he says, I want for the praises to flow from your lips and not cursing. I want for what you give out of your heart and your mouth to others, be that which fills them up and brings life and not a curse. He says, bless them, even if they don't deserve it. Bless them. And one of the things that we have to understand that there is the natural tendency to want to retaliate, to want to get angry, and to say things that are harmful and injurious. There are times when we are frustrated and we get to a place where we may say things that are sinful, that brings a curse. And God is saying, that's not my way. But anything that God requires for us to do, he gives us the equipment to do it. Amen? Yeah, amen. The word says that he's going to work in us both to will and to do according to his good purpose. And don't you know, not only is it God's will for us to be blessed, it's God's will for us to bless others. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. This is what we're going to do. And to speak blessings means to speak well of. It means to praise. It means to invoke and to, and to declare good fortune, success, and favorable outcomes on the person that, that you are speaking to. God bless you. God bless you. Even when a person sneezes, some are in the habit of saying, God bless you. It's to counteract what the sneeze may represent. Sneezes may represent the beginning of sickness. And so to say God bless you means... I'm bringing upon you, I'm decreeing and declaring yes. over your life health and abundance. Yes. You see, when we bless one another with our mouths, we're saying what God would say to that person too. Yes. You see, God says, I've heard, and this is even the song that we, we sang. We've heard from heaven that God is going to bless us with healing and he's going to set us free. You see, we have to speak those things. We want to speak life. Because there was power of life and power of death in our tongue, and we choose which way to go with it. When we speak life, we're speaking the blessing. When we speak death, we're cursing. God said that ought not be for us. We decree and declare, and we make the commitment to speak life. 
We're breaking off every curse. We're breaking off every curse. Even we are stopping the perpetuation of curse-like circumstances in the lives of others around us by our own lips. Another way that curses can be landed on a person or self-imposed were curses. Yes. These two are examples of implicit cursing. Sometimes people speak words of death over themselves. They speak debilitating things that limit their success. Have you ever said or have you ever heard someone say, I'll never be good at anything. I'll never forgive myself for the mistake that I made. God doesn't love me. I will never speak to this situation again in a negative way. I'll never dance. I'll never sing again. No one will ever love me. I want to die. I'm better off dead. These are lies from the devil. These are lies from the devil. And the devil wants to use your own mouth to curse your own life. I'll never get it right. I'm always, and then you fill in the blank. Stop cursing yourself. Stop cursing yourself. And although you may have heard others say it against you, you don't repeat it. Come out of agreement with the word curse and speak blessings over your own life. Amen? Hallelujah. So the devil always wants to attack our esteem. And he wants to get to a, a place in our lives where he inserts abusive lies and accusations that are spoken against us. And eventually he wants for us to get to the place where we start agreeing with him and what he said and what he's implying so that it has expression in our life. You see, the enemy knows that, you know what, if they keep hearing it in their mind, and they keep hearing it in their ear, and they get to the point where it goes from their ear and their head to their heart, and now it's in a place of faith, a place of belief. Those are the ingredients for manifestation. If I could just get them to speak out of their own mouth, that curse. Now they are making a declaration. They are using the power of their spoken word against themselves. They're self-sabotaging. That's exactly what the devil wants. But we have to make a decision that every curse will be broken off of my life and it will not come by way of my own lips. I break agreement with the devil. I come out of agreement with every lie that has been spoken against me. I renounce it and reject it. Somebody say, break it off every curse. Curses can be put, be put on an individual, and we spoke about this by others, and these are explicit cursing, and these are done by those specifically with intention who are involved in the occult. These can be witches, warlocks, individuals involved in the dark arts. Curses also can be brought upon a person by way of unscriptural covenant. And we see here in Exodus chapter 23, it says, you shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. If we look also in the New Testament, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 14, it says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Baal? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? We've already seen that idol worship will bring a curse. But if we link up and partner up with individuals who are involved in the worship of idols and who don't follow the ways of God, the Bible says make no covenant with them. Often we find in the scripture that God would instruct the children of Israel for their men not to marry the, the women of the foreigners of the land. Because if and when they did, they would be turned to idol worship. And then that would bring a curse. We need to be careful with those that we partner with. 
unscriptural covenant can bring a curse. And if you have anything in your home that has been dedicated to a demon spirit that has been involved in occult like things. The scripture says in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26 do not bring a detestable thing into your house, or you like it will be set apart for destruction. It's saying that when you bring that detestable thing, you may not even realize it can be some emblem, it can be some artifacts, something that you just picked up. You may get a strange feeling about it. God has said, Don't bring that in your house. Because what will happen is it will open you up for a curse to land. It will bring destruction in your life. And it goes on and it says, regard it as vile and utterly detested, for it is set aside or set apart for destruction. You see, all of those things that are abominable, we need to get out of our homes. Those things that represent things that are opposed to God's will. God says, get it out. Get it out of your house. Remove it, remove it, extract it from your house. Yes. And so the good news today, and we've been hearing it, is that we believe that Jesus Christ has broken the curse. He has given us all power and all authority over the enemy. And he has said now that there is a reason for the curse not to land. Yes, God. So now... Because the reason that could have had expression, the thing that the enemy could have used as a legal right against us, against us Jesus has said, I'm taking it away. I'm taking it away. I'm going to remove it from your life. I'm going to pay the price that you need to pay for that sin that you committed, for the sin that your ancestors have committed, all the way back to Adam. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to set you free, breaking off every curse, even now. And so we find in the scripture, it says, talking about Abraham, and we're going to read Genesis verse 22, and we're coming to a close. God is saying, I have sworn by myself, says the Lord, I have sworn by myself, says the Lord, that you, since you have done this and have not withheld from me, or begrudge giving me your son, your only son. This is God speaking to Abraham. It goes on in verse 17. I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of the heavens and like the sand of the seashore. And your seed, your heir, that be Christ, your seed will possess the gate of his enemies. If we look at Genesis 22, and we read this already, verse 18, and your seed, that be Christ. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, and by him bless themselves, because you have heard and obeyed my voice. You see, God is saying right now that it is because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross that we are now blessed. We have now received the blessing of Abraham. If we look at Genesis chapter 26, it says, Dwell temporary in this land, and I will be with you and will favor you with blessings and for your descendants. You see, God will perform this. He said, I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham. You see, we now are the blessed of Abraham. And Jesus Christ, made a way for us to receive now the blessing that God promised Abraham many, many years ago. God said, I purpose for you to be blessed and not cursed. And so now we find in Scripture what Jesus has done. We find that every ordinance that was written against us by the enemy that we refer to has been blotted out with the blood. Has been blotted out with the blood. The blood of Jesus has blotted out every accusation that the enemy would use against us. The blood even takes our name off of every demonic altar. The blood paid the price for us to be set free. You see, the consequence of the, of the, of the cause was the curse. And Jesus said, guess what? I'm going to be the one that gets cursed. 
Jesus said, I'm going to take the curse of my own body. I'm going to receive the sting of death even in myself. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, it says, Christ purchased our freedom. There it is. And redeemed us from the curse of life. Redeemed us from the curse of the law and his, con and his condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs or who is crucified on the tree. That be the cross. You see, Jesus paid the price. He paid the price for us to be liberated and set free. His blood, we found, has canceled and blotted out every ordinance and every legal charge. In Colossians verse 2, verse 14, it speaks of this. And I'm going to read this last portion. It says that the blood, let me start from the beginning. Jesus' blood canceled and blotted out the charges of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. It blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. He has taken it away by nailing it to the cross. Having disarmed the powers and the authorities and made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. We have victory, saints. Break it off every curse. You have the victory. And the scripture says in Revelation chapter 12, it says, for we have overcome him, that be the accuser, that be the devil, by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of our testimony, we have overcome, we've overcome the cross. We've overcome every curse by the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so right now, because we are the blessed of Abraham, God says, it is my will that you be blessed. And so for some of you out there, you may have said, you know, there have been some things that have been operative in my life that I need to have broken off. These curses. There have been intentional curses. Some, some may feel like they're under witchcraft attack. And sometimes my wife and I, we minister to individuals who will say, hey, you know what? I'm under attack and I believe it's witchcraft. Some may feel like I'm under attack because of word curses that have been spoken over and against me that I've been fighting off. Some may have found or have experienced setbacks and abnormal failures and Misfortunes. Well, to more, this morning, today, yeah. every curse now yeah. is going to be broken. If that be you, if that be you, yeah. wherever you are, we just ask that you would just wave, wave your hand, wave your hand to say, God, I need these curses broken off of my life. I need everything broken off of my life that doesn't bring the blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. And right now, I want for us to repeat a prayer. I want for us to repeat a prayer. And pray this from your heart. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the blood of Jesus, I condemn, break, and release myself and my family from any and all evil curses and every legal hold of the enemy operating against us. I break and I release myself from any ordinance, any incantation, any evil program operating against me. Against every demonic altar. Against every hex and vex. Against every spell and psychic power. Against all mind control. Against any witchcraft or dark powers that have been put upon me through any person or individuals. Involved in the occult. I break. And cancel. The power of every evil curse. Every word curse. Every hateful thought. Every careless curse word spoken in anger. 
And every witchcraft prayer, every prayer spoken against me, spoken against, me against, my family, against my family, or my destiny, or my destiny in, the in the name of Jesus, I break and cancel, I break and cancel every evil pronouncement every evil spoken against my family, spoken against my, family my, lineage, my lineage that has been programmed. That has into my spirit, into my spirit to, bring to bring failure and hardship. And hardship. I, subdue and I subdue and cancel by the power, by the power of, the of the blood of Jesus. The force of every negative prediction, of every negative prediction spoken, against me or my family, spoken against me or my family, whether intentional, whether intentional or, carelessly, or carelessly, that does not align. That with God's promise. With God's promise. I, command I command all such demonic power, such demonic power to, leave me now to leave me now in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I, ask you, Lord, I ask you, Lord, put all these curses, all these curses under, your blood under your blood and destroy the power, destroy the power behind, them behind them so that they now, so that they now become null and void and canceled. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. And I break all bonds of physical and mental illness as a consequence of a curse. And Father, I thank you that you have set me free. You have set my family free. On my father's side, and my mother's side, and my mother's side all, the all the way back to Adam. You have taken off, have taken off my, name my name off of every demonic altar. Of every demonic altar. And, my and my DNA has now been redeemed, has now been redeemed by, the by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together Hallelujah. and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. And so, God, we thank you that you have washed us clean from the injury that these curses have brought. You have healed our souls. God, we thank you that you have set us free and you have broken off the curse. We thank you, Lord God, that we are free now. And we decree and declare that we will speak blessings over our lives, over the lives of others. We thank you that every entry point and every open door of the enemy has been canceled and shut. And we are set free. God, we thank you that you have redeemed us. And no longer, Lord, shall we find hardship. No longer shall we find confusion, breakdown, death-like experiences. Now, God, we receive and we agree that we are healed and we are set free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen, amen, amen. God, we thank you. God, we love you. We bless you. And if someone out there has heard this, and you have said, you know, I have been on the, not necessarily the receiving end, but the end that has given the curse. And you see, God always gives room for repentance. For someone to say, God, I don't want to be in that place. I want to be right with you and right with each other, and I want to do your will. God says, I want to heal you. I want to forgive you. I want to cleanse you. Sometimes when we make a mistake or we fall, God says, I need you to understand that a righteous man may fall, even in this area, seven times, but he gets back up again. He gets back up again, and God says, come to me. Let's reason together. And although your sin may be as red as crimson, I will wash you as white as snow. He says, just come bring it to me. Bring it to me. You see, he wants for you to be right, and he wants for you to posture yourself, to be a blessing, and to receive being blessed. If that be you, let's say this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I admit that I have used my mouth and I have spoken words that has brought a curse 
against others. And I've used my mouth that has brought a curse even against myself. I repent. I'm sorry. Please, Lord, forgive me. I repent. I turn from that way. And I now turn to you, God. Father, help me that I use my words to bring life and not death, to speak blessings and not a curse. Thank you, God, for the indwelling of your spirit who enables me to do it. I partner with you and I yield my tongue to you. Speak through me, Lord. Thank you, God, for forgiving me and for cleansing me with your blood. I will this day forward speak blessings to build up and to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone say amen, 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 amen. Thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. For you are the God of another chance. We thank you, Lord God. That you are the God of another chance. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for keeping us on track. We love you and we thank you. Thank you for setting us free. And lastly, there may be some who may say, I don't know you, Lord God, for the pardoning of my sins in the first place. For I have never given my life in the first place to you. Yes, I've word cursed. As a matter of fact, every other word that I say is a curse word. Trust me, I know about it. Everything that I say is a word that is harmful against anyone that I don't agree with. Trust me, I know about it. God is saying, today is the day of salvation. I'm going to set you free. Not only do I want to break the curses in your life now, I want to break the curse of sin and death. If that be you, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you now and I admit that I am a sinner and I am sorry for all of my sins that I have ever committed. Please forgive me. I repent. I turn from my own way of life and I now turn to you. Please forgive me. And I thank you, God, for sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross in my place for my sins so that I could be forgiven. And thank you, God, for bringing him back to life so that I can have eternal life. And right now, I open up my life and I open up my heart and I invite you, Jesus, to come into me as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, God, for forgiving me and receiving me as your child. Hallelujah. Just put your hands together and give God the praise. Somebody join and add it to the kingdom of God to this day. Hallelujah. You see, there is rejoicing in heaven. I believe the key person that rejoices in heaven is God. You see, this is the day of salvation. Someone came into the kingdom. Hallelujah. We just thank God. We praise God. We praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, O oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We glorify you. Wow, what an awesome word. Breaking off the curse. Breaking off the curse. And truth is, Every one of us should be praying that prayer That's right. from our hearts. Yes. Amen. Amen. The truth is everybody yes. comes from a lineage and a bloodline yes. and has their own way of thinking. Yes. And it's so apropos that just like God, everybody Amen. should say a prayer that we come clean before God. Yes. We empty out everything that we've ever said or done yes. that has not aligned up with his word. Truth is we all have to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All have sinned and come short of the glory. But God is so faithful that his word says we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. 
and we can ask for mercy and we shall obtain mercy. Isn't that like God? Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We thank you because you're breaking the curse and it's already done. Because in Mark 11, 4, it tells us that if we have prayed and if we believe, we've already received and we shall have it and we shall have it. We are free from the curse because what you have blessed, no man can curse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your refreshing winds of your word to let us know how blessed we really are and how clean we can be once we come to you in repentance. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody, just worship God. We take a pause and we say thank you. Thank you because if you said those prayers of renunciation from every curse, you have to know that even in the realm of the spirit, those chains have broken. Those chains have broken. Those chains on your mind have broken. The chains off of your mouth, hallelujah, are broken. Your ancestry chains have broken. Come on, hallelujah. They're broken, they're broken, they're broken. You gotta believe that they're broken. They're broken. It's not God's will that anyone should perish. They're broken, they're broken, they're broken. They're broken. They're broken. Come on. You got to believe that you're broken. I'm actually speaking to the atmosphere around us. They're broken. They're broken. I'm speaking to your atmosphere. Those on social media. They're broken. I'm making a declaration. I'm telling you. They're broken in the name of the Lord. They're broken in the name of the Lord. They're broken in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He breaks our chains. He breaks our chains. Come on. Hallelujah. They're broken. Hallelujah. And as we're continuing in this worship experience, hallelujah, we're going to worship in our giving. Hallelujah. Luke 6 and 38 says, and give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says, well, 3, I read verse 3. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. I just want to say a prayer as we give a faith seed. I, I want to say a prayer. Hallelujah. For those who even on social media, if you can just touch your wallet or your whatever represents you know, your card, honey, touch your wallet. Just touch your wallet. We're just going to pray. Because I'm asking God to break even and to continue to break chains off of people's finances and mindsets to give. To sow. To give. There are three things that we ought to give out of. Our time, our talent, meaning our gifting. Hallelujah. And our, our, our treasure. Hallelujah. And sometimes we may be leaning in that we are. Time may be a little scarce, so some will give, send finances and give so that the things and the works can continue to go on. Sometimes they don't have to give in their finances, but what they do is they give in their time so that the work can go on. We give out, our out of our treasure. Hallelujah. Our talent. Hallelujah. Sometimes you may not have finances, but you have a gift and you have a talent, a skill, and ability. So you sow yourself. Come on. We've all been where we've had all three or one of those three at some point. But we want to continue to break the chains off of finances and mindsets to give and to sow. The enemy comes sometimes for all of us, but today we tear down every stronghold. Father, today we stand in agreement that your word declares that you give seed 
to the sower. And sometimes your people are attacked even in the areas of finances. And Lord, today we know that the curse has been broken. God, we even command that every curse, every mind-binding thought that does not want to sow of our time, our talent, and our treasure that you have given us all three. The enemy comes against us and so, Lord, we tear it down. We renounce those things as sin that will want us to withhold from you what you have given us in the areas of our time, our talent, and our treasure. My God, break the chains that bind in the name of Jesus. Loose us, oh God. Loose those who say, you know, I want to give, but I don't have it because the enemy has attacked their finances. Loose those who say, you know what? I, I, I want to uh, give my time, but I, you know, I just don't have enough time. I'm, I'm busy being busy. The blood of Jesus. Oh God, the gifting and the talents that you've given to us. It's so that we can sow and be poured out. That it may yield fruit and give you the glory of every gifting and ability that you've given to us. And some don't even feel worthy to even give of their talent. Lucy here in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray, God, that you would bless everyone under the sound of my voice in the areas of time, talent, and treasure. I plead and invoke the blood of Jesus in the areas uh, where there has been attack. I speak and I ask, I decree and I declare a divine releasing of all three for the work of the ministry and for your glory and for the enhancement of those who say, you know what, I'm just going to give up my time, my talent, and my treasure. Your, the word says, that our gifts will make room for us. That means it will bring provision. And I pray for those who are out even in social media, those under the sound of my voice, that you would bless them in each area, that even they can provide for their families and the communities in which they serve and live. It is your will that we, hallelujah, sow our seed, even if our seed is us. Even if our seed is our time, even if our seed is our treasure, and even if it is our talent, break the chains that bind. We lift our finances to you right now. We lift our faith seed and we attach an assignment. And I'm calling my assignment a breaking off the curse assignment. I'm speaking it over my own finances for my own bloodline, for my own family. Right now in the name of Jesus and we sow. We ask that you multiply in good measure. Press down and shake it together. Cause it to run over in the lives of your people. As we sow, God, we bring warfare even against the enemy because we're breaking the chains that bind. Wherever you are, speak to your seed. Speak to your seed. Speak to your seed, social media. Trust me, I'm feeling something in my spirit. Speak to your seed. Speak to your seed, we'll sow electronically. Speak to your seed. Give it an assignment. Speak to your seed. Have you spoken? Hallelujah. Because there will be seed, time, and harvest. And what you sow and what you decree even over your seed. Hallelujah. We believe the word. There will be a harvest. Come on, somebody. So, Father, we lift it to you once again. We ask that you have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You can give at this time. If you want to give in the box, you can give through the box right here. Just put it right there, sweetheart. For those on social media, if you want to give by way of an app, you can go to the dollar sign. Heal Church 
H-E-A-L, church. Or you can go to healempower.org. Again, healempower.org. Hallelujah. And you can give your seed. As long as you speak to your seed and give it an assignment. And for everyone who souls, believe that we actually pray for you specifically. Sometimes my husband and I would get an alert that someone sold and we'll automatically out of nowhere just touch and agree together. We'll hold hands even at home and we'll begin to pray over that individual and their family. We'll get an alert and we're just like thanking God, but we will begin to pray because we know that you are believing God and you're standing in expectation for something. Hallelujah. As you should. We thank the Lord for this word, breaking every curse. I pray that each of us have gotten something out of this word. It's been amazing. Amen. It's been amazing. This word is apropos for all. Amen. Amen. For all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. God is doing something. You can give your gift. Amen. God is doing something. Amen. God is bringing healing in the land. Hallelujah. For those who would take a hold of what God is saying and what God is doing, you we are being healed from the inside out. We are working out our soul salvation because our Redeemer, our King is coming. Hallelujah. The King is coming. Hallelujah. The King is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back. And we have to work at our soul salvation. Hallelujah. Until he comes. And he's coming. He's coming. Hallelujah. Come on. The king is coming. The king is coming. Amen. And we thank God because while we are here, he wants us to be free. And we give him the glory for it. Amen. 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 Honey, what it, uh, do you have anything to say before we give benediction? Hallelujah. You know, I just feel led. I'm sorry. I feel led. If you can just lay your hands. Dear brother, do you mind? Do you mind if uh, you get anointed and prayed over? We're just thanking God. You are the young man that walked out of a car accident. We give God all the glory. You know why? Because my husband and I were driving. And not a scratch. Amen. My husband and I were driving. We saw an accident when we were on our way to Virginia Beach. And someone was given CPR by a fire. They were being given CPR. And we saw it. And we saw the car. And we began to pray. But I looked and said, honey, the fireman has given them CPR. You were in a car accident. We got an email from your mother in the wee hours of the morning. Hallelujah. In the wee hours of your morning, the moment that I saw it, I began to pray. And I told my husband, I said, we got to pray over Sister Lisa's son. Hallelujah. And we just began to pray. And then not long after that, we prayed to God be all the glory. She sent a uh, a praise report. But you know what? You walked away from what we saw people get CPR over. You walked away with somebody did not make it out from. And so we know that God has a calling over your life. And God has his hands on you. My God, we thank you for sparing him. We thank you. Oh God, I thank you. I hear eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, neither has an entered into the hearts. Hallelujah, the things that God has for you. Don't take it a light thing that you walked away from a car accident. Don't take it as a light thing, but somebody didn't wake up. Somebody didn't make it through what you made it through. And I heard your mom say, boy, I just saw the car. And she was blessing the Lord because what the car looked like, she take Oh God, I understand. And Lord, we thank you. So now, God, we lift up a hedge of protection all over him. Lord, I invoke the blood of Jesus all over his life. Oh, what the enemy thought he could do. Oh, God, you said not so. Not so. God, we bless you. He's standing here as a testimony for what you've done. And God, we give you all the glory. Hallelujah. 
we rejoice with those who rejoice. Come on, and we are rejoicing with your mother. We pray breakthrough over your life. We pray that God will continue to keep you in Jesus' name. God bless you, our brother. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I know what it's like to be in a car accident. I know. I remember in 2007 when the enemy sent a launch after my life. And I had two car accidents for the first time in my life. Day, one day apart. And I remember being wheeled out of a hospital where my knees went into the dashboard and my, my face was hit and they thought they had to do so what was it, surgery on my face. 2007. Hallelujah. So sometimes I understand even in the realm of the spirit, there's things that are sent out. They're weapons. Like I said earlier, when the word gave us, just come back to my remembrance. We don't get to dictate the weapons that are formed. But you walked out. Those curses are broken. I walked out. Hallelujah. Well, I will die when I'm walking now. Amen. Hallelujah. Either way, I came out. Hallelujah. I came out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And these assaults that come, the curses that come against people, is because the enemy knows who you are. You may not even know who you are. I didn't even know who I was in 2007. I was saved, but I didn't know the, to the magnitude of where God was going to call me. I had no idea in 2007 that in 2021, I'd be sitting here with a microphone in my hand. My mind wasn't even on that. Yes, I love the Lord, but I had no idea. But sometimes the enemy knows, my God, I, hallelujah, hallelujah. I heard the word of the Lord say, before you were born, you were in your mother's womb. You, I formed you and I ordained you. Hallelujah. I hear that in my ear for you. You may not even know, but it will be revealed to you later. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Somebody say the curse is broken in the name of Jesus. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. We just thank God. He is worthy to be praised. And we have a lot to be grateful about. We thank God for the word. We thank God for the seed sown. We thank God for this brother here. You are a testimony. And we praise God because of you. We praise God because of what he did for you. We heard about it. Yes, won't we do it? Won't we do it? You see, God wants to bless us. We are the blessed of Abraham. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. And we trust that you all have been blessed on this morning, today. Amen. And we're going to prepare ourselves for the benediction. Amen. And so if you would stand to your feet, for those who are online, you may do the same. And just lift your hands to the screen. Lift your hands up to the Lord. May the Lord bless you and watch over and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious and merciful to you. May the Lord lift up his approving countenance upon you and turn his face toward you and your family and give you his peace, give you his blessing and his power. Receive it now in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and Hallelujah. amen. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah.